keys turn from a remote location and miles away, in one minute, a missile launches. The Minuteman missile was developed in an era of Cold War, as the United States moved away from World War II and edged closer to the Vietnam War. 1,000 Minuteman missiles were quickly installed throughout the central and northern Great Plains, each location needing skilled servicemen to tend to the missiles until they were needed. Stationed in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Don Keel became a key player in the care and maintenance of the Minuteman missile. So what we did is we went to the missile sites and perform those inspections and any work orders that had to be completed, we did that. So I did that for a number of years until I became an airman first class. I had one year left in the service and they called me in right after I got upgraded to airman first class and told me he wanted me to be a team chief. Well, I questioned that because there was never been any airman first class that were team chiefs. And he said, well, I get a lot of reports from all your supervisors. We think you have what it takes to be a team chief. So then I said to him, I said, well, there's two staff sergeants out there that aren't team chiefs. What about them? He said, he, they don't have what it takes. So I said, well, I'll, I'll take it then, but I have one request. And the sergeant said, well, what's that? I said, don't assign either one of those sergeants to my team. <laughs> It was his time in the Air Force that nurtured his love for aviation, moving him swiftly from his years of service to civilian life on the airfield. So I got discharged on Friday. I drove to Sydney, Nebraska, and I started my first job on Monday morning working for Overland Air Service. My primary was flight instruction and charter, but when I didn't do that, you name it, I did it. Cut grass, worked on airplanes, worked in the shop, worked up in the front of the office when we sold fuel, et cetera, fuel airplanes. Jack of all trades, sort of. I did that for a year. Maybe a jack of all trades, but definitely a master of one, aviation. Don got his instrument rating in six days, and on the next day, he received his instrument instructor rating. From crop dusting, airmail, then to Air Wisconsin, and finally to North Central Airlines, where he stayed for an impressive 29 years. Over the years, Don has amassed many stories and deepened his passion for aviation. He also acquired a few planes, and his love of flight comes through when he speaks of one plane in particular. One I own that really is one I like to talk about, I owned a Warbird for four years, a C-45H, which is a military version of a Beach 18. Twin 450 horse radial engines and burns 50 gallons of gas an hour, and what a hoot. I loved it, I loved that airplane. Entering the world of air shows with his C-45H, Don gained the experience necessary to chair the Manitowoc fly-in, and he finally had some time to devote to the event. If you haven't figured this out, I thought maybe that's where you were gonna hit on. I love to fly. My license plate's on my car, says that. I have a letter I, a heart, and two FLI or FLY. You could actually have four cars that say the same by altering the first and last letter. So I flew the de Havilland Otter, which is a nice twin engine airplane, high wing. I flew the Beach 99, both of those carried 15 to 19 passengers. And I also flew the Metro Liner, which was built in San Antonio, Texas. Then with North Central, some of these I flew both seats, some of them I flew strictly captain, but I flew the Convair 580, both seats. I flew the DC-9, all of them, the 10, the 30, the 40, the 50, both seats. 757 co-pilot, 727 co-pilot. Then I checked out in the Airbus A19 and A320. And the one thing about that, and good thing I didn't think about it till school was over, I had never flown that airplane. 
So I flew the 319, 320, same one that went in the drink with out in the Hudson out there for eight years. And then my last year, I, I wanted to fly one heavy and I flew the Airbus A330, which was 300 passengers, uh, 16 flight attendants, co-pilot, junior captain, and I was senior captain on that. Not only is Don devoted to aviation, he does it well. He is one of a selected few who have earned the Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award. The Master Pilot Award, you have to have 50 or more years of unblemished flying career. In other words, you haven't scratched an airplane, you haven't had an accident or an incident, and it's called the Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award. I got that four years ago already. I've been flying 57, 58 years, but I got it after flying 53 years. And that's probably quite something. While Don's career is very impressive, it's how he's helped Wisconsin Aviation that brings him here today. Don was instrumental in proposing and the passing of Statute 89552, which provides the immunity to property owners who allow their private airstrips to be used by recreational aviation purposes. It's Don's passion, enthusiasm, and dedication to excellence in the field of aviation that makes him a true Hall of Famer. You look at that uh, video there and you wonder what the guy hasn't done. Uh, little airplanes, big airplanes, general aviation, commercial aviation, scheduled. But uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because we're getting towards the end of the evening here. But I want to mention about two things. One pretty good, one not so good. At the end there it talked about uh, in making it uh, easy for some people who own uh, private strips to sleep because they don't have to worry about uh, being sued for uh, some nonsense somebody might uh, do when they land. And uh, that's very helpful to those people. The uh, not so good one is, uh, well to back up a little bit, uh, quite a while, a while ago I had the opportunity to fire a, a Maverick missile off an airplane. It's about uh, six feet long, uh, gets up to about a Mach and a half or so, plus or minus a little bit, 250, 350 pound warhead. And I was feeling pretty good about myself. Then I saw the beginning of this thing. The bad thing that's going to happen is when I go home tonight, I'm not going to be able to sleep because I'm going to have a severe case of missile envy. Without any further ado, I'd like to, like to present uh, Don Keel for a well-deserved induction into the Wisconsin Aviation Hall of Fame. Last but not least, I got more than six to eight minutes, huh, Tom? So anyway, not on my script, and I don't normally use a script, but Tom called me up. First of all, I'm going to tell you, I hope I make this through this. This is probably more emotional than something I've ever gone through, uh, right up with the uh, birth of my children or marriage to my lovely wife, Lynn, and most recently, the birth of my grandson, Gentry, who I love dearly. So anyway, good evening, everyone. Tom Thomas called me a while back and left a message saying he was the president of the Wisconsin Hall of Fame, so I thought it would just be a social call because I had just spoke with Rose Dorsey the day before and I knew we were all friends, but he said he was a president, so I had an idea of what was going on. I called him back and he said, well, you're going to be inducted into the Wisconsin Aviation Hall of Fame. Fortunately, I was sitting down. But then he says to me, well, you know, we've got uh, seven inductees last, last year, which was canceled, and, and this year. So you're only going to have about six to eight minutes to speak when you get up there. So I told a few of my Green Bay flying buddies that are all here tonight, I told him that. You know, I said, Tom Thomas said, I have six to eight minutes to speak when I get up there. They all laughed and said, are you nuts? Keel gets up there, he needs about six to eight days. So anyway, I look at my watch. 
we're doing well. They want everybody out of here at about 9 o'clock, I think, so maybe I can have just a couple more minutes. First picture you saw, I was holding up a piece of paper like that. That's actually when I soloed in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I started flying in August. I soloed right away in September. I had all of eight hours and 40 minutes and 20 landings. And if you look close at the picture, you might have seen my slacks plastered to, plastered to my legs. It was so windy. As most instructors here will tell you, the first time they solo a student, they try to pick a, a calm day. Not when you learn how to fly in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which I'm forever grateful for because I know how to handle an airplane and crosswinds and what the rudders are for. Minuteman missiles, we had 100, correction, we had 200 at Cheyenne. All the rest of the bases had 150. And yes, I had the honor of becoming the only airman first class to ever become a team chief, which was quite something. And by the time I left, there had never been another one. Along with that, a little later on down the line, about three, four months later, one of our Saturday morning meetings, <coughs> excuse me, one of our Saturday morning meetings, uh, the uh, officer in charge, we got done, he said, uh, Airman First Class Keel and Master Sergeant so-and-so, stay after the meeting. So we did. Well, he tells us, we had 20 teams there at Cheyenne, and of course I was only 120th of that. But he said, I've picked what I feel is the most deserving of this, and we're going to send you out to California. So we did go out there, myself and, and the master sergeant. I was a little old E-4. He was an E-7, probably on his third or fourth hitch. We got out there. <clears throat> what we did, excuse me, what we did is we prepped the site in between each launch. So I actually got to take part of and see four Minuteman missiles launched. Every Saturday we'd go sit on the hillside not far from where it was, watch the lid blow back, out come the smoke ring and away she'd go. What a sight. Few little factoids and, and I have a little homework for you guys. Two things I want you to Google when, when you have time. Google the Minuteman missile and also Google the 90th strategic missile wing. That's what I was, SAC as they call it, strategic air command. Google that and check them out. Some of the quick factoids about the uh, Minuteman missile. It launched, it went up. Are you ready for this? I know you're not gonna believe this, so you check this out, don't believe me. It goes up to a trajectory of 700 miles at a speed of Mach 23, over 17,000 miles an hour. The flight from takeoff to its target is about 20 minutes. Unclassified range is 6,000 miles. I could tell you what the classified range is, but then I'd have to kill you all, so we don't want to do that. <clears throat> Which brings up a little side story. Where I come from, if they can add an IE or a Y to your name, especially when you're a kid, they do it. So everybody knew me as Donnie. Shortly after I was in the service, my parents are getting calls from people or they're stopping them. And they said, is Donnie in some kind of trouble? And I said, no, why? I said, well, these two people in black suits are here and they're asking all these questions about him. Well, what it was, they were checking me out for my security clearance which I ended up with, I believe, is the second highest security clearance that you can get. Top secret, secret crypto. The crypto part was we worked with codes. Anytime we went to the missile sites, we had to use the codes. Once we got in, we had to burn them. So, and I know they were always different because one time I went to another site within a day of when we were there before, and the codes were totally different. So nothing was ever the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. I spoke to too many people tonight when I got here. All my friends know I'm an introvert, but for some reason I talked my heart off tonight. Yeah, right. You believe that? I got some swamp land out in uh, wherever it is to sell you. Instrument rating, people question that. I got my instrument in six days. I have never found anyone that's come close to that. And people say, how did you do that? I booked a lifer instructor at Cheyenne. His name was Les Larson, bless his soul. And the first day I got there, I took one lesson. Then every day after that, I took three lessons a day. And the nice thing about Cheyenne, Wyoming, other than the wind, you're just about guaranteed nice flying weather all the time. So then he recommended me, <coughs> excuse me, he recommended me for my instrument check ride. And 
even though I still had two more lessons to go before I took the ride. So I went out the following morning, I took two more lessons with him, and then I flew with the examiner that afternoon and passed my instrument. Then the following day, I took the instrument instructor ride. Now the side story with that is when my instructor, who like I say was a lifer, that's all he ever did, when he booked me for that, the FAA examiner says, he can't do that. Les Larson says, the hell he can't. I've given him the duel. You have to give him the check ride. How would you like to take a check ride under that pretense? So anyway, we went out there, threw him in the left seat, gave him an hour duel, and I got my instrument instructor. So that's how it worked out in six and seven days. One thing I get the most, I get a lot of questions from people, but they ask, have you ever had anything happen to you? I said, are you kidding? You got six to eight days? You name it, I have had it. If you fly jet engine equipment, all the pilots here will vouch for that. You probably never have an engine failure in your, in your career. Whereas if you flew recips, and I have a few buddies here that flew those, it's not if you were going to have an engine failure, it's when with the big old radials. Which, by the way, when we went out to California, I got one hour in a C-54, which is the military version of DC-6, which was really cool. So, you name it, I've had it. I've had cabin pressure loss, 31,000 at Detroit, declared, got on the ground, looked back, opened the door, there's all the maps, or all the masks hanging out. I've had bird strikes, came out of Kansas City, weather was terrible. We uh, got into a flock of geese, no pun intended, we literally ducked, and before I came back up, I'm looking at the gauges, thinking those engines are gonna come unglued. And the bad thing about it, the airport was below landing minimums. You can legally take off if you have a takeoff alternate within a certain distance. So we had to go back and shoot the approach. I could have gone to the takeoff alternate, but I didn't want to gamble because I didn't know if we had ingested a bunch of birds. Shot the approach. Uh, Co-pilot had made the takeoff. I took over command of the aircraft, and I briefed the co-pilot a little differently than what we normally do. And when we had 100 feet, <coughs> excuse me, he actually called 10-foot increments and we went over the approach lights, you could see the flashing, still couldn't see anything. When he hit 20, I checked the rate of descent, and when we hit 10, I checked it some more, and just then I saw the runway as we touched, so quite something. Uh, thunderstorms, I've only turned around twice in my career, and both times to show you I did what was right. One of them was trying to get in Minneapolis, and I turned around, went back to Ironwood. It took them four days to restore power at the Minneapolis, St. Paul area. So that was one time. Another time I canceled going from Omaha to Kansas City. And to show you that was right, they didn't get a flight all night long in either direction. So Lieutenant Olst, General Olstrom there stole my thunder a little bit. I never got paid for a day of work. They paid me to go there. I flew for nothing, I'll tell you that. So I wish I could spend more time up here. Am I doing all right, Tom? Good. He's got a little, he's got a little time to close. Uh, as my friends know, I'm never at a loss for words. I'm working on that introvert thing, you know. And I'd like to thank the Aviation Hall of Fame for this honor. I am, to tell you, I am overwhelmed is an understatement. I've fortunately been able to keep it together up here because I was very upset. Uh, to be with all these heavy hitters is an honor and a half. So uh, thank you, uh, Wisconsin Aviation Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank Rose Dorsey, our past 16-year president, who encouraged my wife to submit me for this, which four-page submission was quite something. And if you saw my wife, Lady Lynn, I put her on the nose of my warbird rather than something a little risque. I felt that was pretty classy, actually, and got a lot of compliments for that. I'd also like to thank, I invited 47 people here tonight, 45 showed, and two have the COVID, so that's the only reason they didn't show. So I thank all the people that gave me the honor of having their presence here. Once again, thank you to the Wisconsin Aviation Hall of Fame. I'd like to salute my fellow veterans. Thank you for your service, and God bless America. <clears throat>